This is the Tristan da Cunha archipelago. The place holds the title of the least populous inhabited territory in the world. It's the most isolated and has the most complex access of any place on the planet. People here live completely cut off from the rest of humanity and there's no other place as inaccessible as this. This archipelago is officially inhabited and is located in the Southern Atlantic Ocean. Tristan da Cunha is part of the British Overseas Territories, which consist of 14 territories under the jurisdiction and sovereignty of the United Kingdom. These locations haven't gained independence or voted to remain British territories. For an island isolated in the middle of the ocean, it's a significant advantage to belong to a wealthy nation that takes care of its interests and ensures its culture and population don't disappear. Most inhabited territories are internally self-governing but are internationally defended by the United Kingdom. But why is the Tristan da Cunha archipelago the most remote inhabited territory in the world? The main point here is Tristan da Cunha Island, the most significant island in the entire territory. And the only official settlement here is called Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, which is the capital of Tristan da Cunha Island. Edinburgh of the Seven Seas is the most remote human settlement in the world. Its closest neighbors are over 2,000 kilometers away. In other words, there are only other humans exactly 2173 km away. This distant neighbor is the island of St. Helena, which lies in the middle of the South Atlantic. St. Helena has an area of 122 km and approximately 4,000 inhabitants. It's also another very isolated location, but St. Helena doesn't approach Tristan da Cunha for several reasons. Tristan da Cunha has a port, a school, and a post office. It's over 2,000 km from Africa and over 3,000 km from Brazil. One of the factors contributing to the island's isolation is the lack of an airport, which prevents tourists from easily entering the country. Getting to Tristan da Cunha requires knowledge, time, and a lot of money. The only way to get there is by sea because the island doesn't even have a landing strip, thus preventing the entry of even small planes. Tourists who dare to make this journey usually gather in Cape Town, South Africa, with a good transportation system, it's possible to reach Tristan da Cunha in a seven-day trip. But the only transport that takes you to the archipelago only operates eight teams a year. In other words, scheduling this visit well in advance is necessary. The vessel is not luxurious and has a capacity for only 12 passengers. Typically, these vessels are quickly occupied because there is a priority for doctors, scientists, officials, and island residents. Upon reaching the most isolated location on the planet, it's possible to behold one of the most breathtaking views imaginable. For rest and sustenance, one must venture to the settlement of Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, which has a population of fewer than 270 people. In this settlement, there are currently around seven surnames, representing families descended from the founders of the area. The families, Glass, Green, Hagen, Lavarello, Repetto, Rogers, and Swain, comprise the entire local population. Due to genetic reasons, half of Tristan da Cunha's population suffers from asthma, which is a common condition among this people. It is believed that several of the founders had asthma, and this condition was passed down genetically from generation to generation. This ensured Tristan da Cunha to have the highest asthma rate in the world. The archipelago today is formed by six islands, namely Nightingale Island, Inaccessible Island, Gough Island, Middle Island, Stoltenhof Island and Tristan da Cunha Island. This island was named after being discovered by a Portuguese explorer named Tristão da Cunha. In 1506, Captain Tristão was appointed commander of a fleet of about 14 ships operating off the coast of Africa and India. During this voyage, Tristão discovered a remote group of islands in the southern Atlantic Ocean and he named the main island after himself. But in 1810, coming directly from Salem, Jonathan Lambert declared that these islands were his property. He renamed them the Refreshment Islands. Despite his success in acquiring these lands, Jonathan suffered a maritime accident while sailing and lost his life. His reign lasted only two years and the island reverted to Tristan da Cunha. In 1815, the British formalized and annexed the archipelago as their territory. This occurred because Napoleon was imprisoned on St. Helena, approximately 2,500 kilometers away. And if the French were to occupy Tristan da Cunha, they could mount a rescue operation. The hindrance to this plan was precisely the sovereignty of the territory and the presence of soldiers there. Returning to modern times, the economy is based on agriculture and fishing. Their local currency 
is the St. Helena Pound. Currently, the island's main sources of revenue are sales of postcards, stamps, and most importantly, tourism. Postal stamps are taken very seriously here, as collectors from around the world desire to obtain Tristan da Cunha stamps. The stamps tell the story of the place, depicting the main events of the island. One of these stamps refers to the most tragic accident that ever happened here, the volcanic eruption of 1961. The main island has a massive volcano in its interior. During a summer night, the smell of sulfur entered the residents' homes, the ground shook, and loud noises began emanating from within the mountain. The volcano was erupting. As we know, the only settlement on Tristan da Cunha is Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, and this settlement was exactly in the path where the lava could flow. There is still nothing in this world that can stop or contain volcanic lava during an eruption. Therefore, the residents had only one option, to flee. The desperate escape happened by boats, and people launched themselves into the sea in order to save their lives and escape from all that destruction. The entire population left the island and it remained uninhabited for over two years. Some were taken to South Africa, while others stayed on uninhabited islands, leaving not a single resident behind. It was only possible to save their own lives as the small boats couldn't accommodate the transportation of the residents' belongings. Moreover, it was a rapid and emergency evacuation to England as refugees. They lived there until 1963 when they were eventually relocated back to their homeland. There, the natives had to rebuild everything that was destroyed by the volcanic lava and find a new way to survive in the most isolated place in the world. The return to the island was accompanied by the British and the territory received all the necessary support to return to what it was before the eruption. Therefore, despite being awarded the title of the most isolated inhabited island in the world, Tristan da Cunha has a story with a happy ending. But not all isolated islands are as fortunate. Far from there lies a place where one of the most tragic stories of survival involving slaves in history occurred. They were abandoned on Tromelin, and now I leave you with this video, where we show why Tromelin became the island of abandoned slaves. Don't forget to subscribe to the Econo Simple channel to receive new videos.